Hello everyone, it's Mr. Fahad. Today we will continue with the chain rule. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to apply the chain rule for differentiation and find the derivative of an inverse function using the chain rule. Okay, so um, if you have a composition function between um, f and g, f after g of x, then this means f of g meaning that you have an outside function um, of an inside function. So um, in this example, f of x is square root of x, g of x is 4 minus x squared. Now, f of g, you will substitute the function g inside f. So this will be the square root of g of x, 4 minus x squared. Now, to find the derivative for this uh, function or this composition, we will assume that the function f is y and the function g is u. Then we will get y equals f of u. Now to find the derivative in respect to x, we will say that dy over dx equals the derivative of the outside function, dy over du, because it's in respect to u, times the derivative of the inside function, du over dx. Again, u is a function of x. So you can see here uh, there is a chain because y and x is not directly connected. Uh, we did a chain by using the uh, u function. So dy over du times du over dx. Or you can think of it as the derivative for the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. So derivative of f of g is the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. That's the chain rule. Let's recap. So the derivative for the uh, composition of f and g um, will be the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. That's all. All right, let's apply the chain rule on this example. So y equals uh, this polynomial or raised to power 5. You can think of it as outside function u power 5, inside function, which is the polynomial itself. So to solve this, first we need to take the derivative of the outside function. Once again, um, derivative of the outside function, so u power 5, what's the derivative? Use the power rule, 5u power 4, or 5 times the expression itself, power 4, times the derivative of the inside function. And then here, the derivative for x cubed will be 3x squared plus derivative of x is 1. Okay, that's all. Here's our result. So the derivative, whenever you have a function raised to a power, will be uh, drag the power down, take the function as it is, to a power, uh, same power minus one times the derivative of what's inside. That's it. Pause the video, try to solve these two questions, and then come back to check your answer. Okay, so with the first one, again, let's apply the result. You have um, the outside function, which is uh, uh, the bracket power four. So the derivative will be four bracket power three times derivative of what's inside the bracket and this will be like so now for the second one um, I can rewrite the expression as a negative power so the denominator will be up with a negative power in order to use the power rule or the result here let's do the derivative for the outside function so you have 6 here drag the power down negative 3 bracket power minus 1 so negative 3 minus 1 is 4. Now let's simplify the expression. So 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. And the negative power here can be positive in the denominator times the derivative of what's inside. Again, just look at the expression inside. Take the derivative. This will be 5 minus 4x cubed. That's all. Now I can just uh, multiply negative 18 with 5 and with the other expression. And this will be my final answer. All right, let's take another example. 
In this example, I have an outside function, which is a square root of u, and inside function, which is this polynomial. Try to solve it, and then come back to ch check your answer. So the first step here, we can rewrite the radical as fractional power. So square root is power half. And then um, we will use the chain rule. So the derivative of the outside, uh, take half down of the bracket power half minus one is negative half times the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative for the inside function is just eight. And now I can rewrite this as one over two you have negative half, which is square root two in the denominator. And this will be my final answer. Eight with two will cancel out. I'll end up with four. Okay, so now um, here's the result. Whenever you have a square root, you can uh, find the derivative of uh, what's inside over two times the square root uh, itself. Let's practice more. Try to do this on your own, and then come back to check your answer. All right, so this is a product between two functions, and we have to apply the product rule. So it says the derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second function. And the derivative for this will be 5x power 4. For the derivative um, of the second function, we have to use the previous result. Again, we have a square root, and the derivative for the square root will look like uh, this. So applying the result, this will be my derivative. And now we can just simplify it. Um, this will not change. And here, uh, t power 5 times t power 2, you'll just add the powers. That's all. Let's do another question. In here, we have to compute the derivative, and you can see I have a quotient rule and a chain rule. Pause the video, try to do it on your own, and then come back to check your answer. So for this question, we will use the quotient rule, derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. This will be simplified to power four. Derivative of this is eight. Okay, and in here we will use the chain rule. Now, let's apply the chain rule. This will be 2 times the bracket times the derivative of what's inside the bracket. Don't forget the denominator. And now let's simplify. Um, okay, so in here we have 8 times 2 times 3. This will be negative um, 48. Again, don't forget the negative sign x power 3, because you have x here and x squared here. Now let's take x uh, power 3 plus 1 as a common factor in between these two terms. We'll be left with this. Distribute 8 inside. This will be 8 x cubed plus 8 minus um, 48 x cubed. And now let's combine the expressions to power 3, and this will be my final answer. Now before we continue, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. As a reminder, we offer private and group online math lessons on Zoom, where we cover all UAE national curricula American and British curriculums. We also have the best MSAT math test preparation course with a 50% discount for groups. The first session is always free. So if you are interested in a free lesson, click the link in the description below. Okay, with that said, let's get back to our lesson. Okay, last part of the lesson how to find the derivative of the inverse function. So if f and g are inverse for each other, the derivative of g will be one over the uh, derivative of f of g. So you can see in this formula, I can connect the uh, inverse functions uh, in, in one uh, formula. All right, let's practice. Given the function f has an inverse function g, find g prime of seven. All right, to solve this question, we have to use the formula. And in here, um, we will substitute 7 instead of x. I have to find g of 7 first. Now, think about it. If, if they are both inverse for each other, and I know it's a one-to-one -one function, um, 
So uh, uh, the domain of F is on the left side, the range is on the uh, uh, right side, and f of x connects x and y. Now g of x is the inverse function, and it connects the uh, opposite uh, uh, direction. So you will ask yourself, g of 7 is basically the x in f that has its y value as 7. So once again, g of 7 is f inverse of 7. So what is the uh, uh, x value that gives f a value as 7? And in order to find it, you will take f of x, set it equals to 7. And you can then use your calculator to solve this equation. So let's solve it using our calculator. Um, this equals to 7 and then shift solve equals and you can see x equals 1 so at x equals 1 I will get 7 so f of 1 is 7 and therefore g of 7 is 1 again this will be 1 all right so uh, let's get back to the formula substitute f prime of 1 and then find the derivative at 1. Again, you can use your calculator to do this step. So we need to find the derivative of, at 1. Um, write the function at 1. This will be 16. So now I know that g prime of 7 equals 1 over 16. Now, without using your calculator, you can simply do the derivative for this uh, polynomial and then substitute at 1. And this will be like we said, 1 over 16. Okay, last example, use the graph to find the derivative of the composite function at the given point if it exists. So I have f of g of x at x equals 0. Let's go ahead and use our chain rule at 0. So the derivative of the outside function at 0 times the derivative of the inside function. And this will be the derivative of g of 0 from the graph, here's the graph of g of x, at 0 I can see it's 1. So f prime of 1. So now to find these values, we will use the graph. From the graph, the derivative at 1 is the same as the slope at this point. I can see it's a straight line, so the slope at any point on the line is the same. And for this line, um, you can use the rise over run rule. In this case, the slope is change in y over change in x, so it will be 3. Or you can use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and you'll get the same answer, 3. Now, for the derivative at 0 for g of x, you can find the derivative at 0 by doing the rise over run. Again, change in y over change in x, and the slope will be 1. You can check by using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the slope equals 1. This means that the derivative is 1. And now substitute these values and the answer will be 3. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye.